as the parent or contributor, the next thing that will happen is that you will receive an email invitation to complete your portion of the student's FAFSA. Each contributor or parent must have their own FSA ID and password to access and complete the FAFSA. The parent will be asked to identify and provide contact information similar to what was asked of the student. Parents are also going to be asked to provide consent for the federal tax information transferred from the IRS. The parent will be asked to provide information regarding their marital status, their state of legal residence. This information will be very similar to the information required by the student. As a parent, you will be requested to submit some financial information. One of these pieces of information will be the receipt of means-tested federal benefits that you have received in the previous two years. These benefits could include Medicaid or Supplemental Security Income, free or reduced priced school lunch, temporary assistance for needy families, or TANF, Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Programs, or SNAP, and Special Supplemental Nutrition Program for Women, Infants, and Children, or WIC. You will also be requested to submit information regarding family size and the number of students that you have in college. Tax return information will be transferred over by the IRS if consent has been provided. If the transfer is successful, you will be asked to answer minimal questions regarding your financial information. Parents will also have a section to complete regarding their assets and investments. These assets may include, but are not limited to, your cash savings and checking account balances at the time of FAFSA submission, the net worth of businesses or investment farms, and the net worth of your investments, including real estate, but excluding your primary residence. You may be prompted to invite another parent to log in and provide information and consent if their information is required. For example, if you are married, but you and your spouse filed separately instead of married filing joint. Each transfer of tax information requires the individual contributor to provide consent for that transfer of information. It is helpful to remember that a family's primary home or the home that the family resides in is not reported as an asset on the FAFSA. Also, when reporting your assets, report the asset value as of the day the FAFSA was submitted. Normally, asset information cannot be updated once the FAFSA is submitted, and if the family should have concerns, they should contact the financial aid office and see if special circumstances exist. Once all the parent information is completed, the parent is going to be prompted to review this information for accuracy. Please pay close attention to this information as corrections can cause a delay in your student's financial aid award packaging. Once the information has been received, the parent or contributor will be required to sign and submit their portion of the FAFSA. That completes our discussion on the parent section of the FAFSA. We will take a moment to pause and allow you to digest and review any of the information we have discussed so far. 
we will wrap up with a discussion on a few other important pieces of FAFSA information and helpful tips that will help you and your student when completing your FAFSA.